Around 6 p.m. on August 15, 1994, in Evanston, Wyoming, Lori Larson, her husband Reed, and her three children had just finished dinner when they discovered some jobs are best left to the professionals. Reed had decided that he was going to go ahead and fix the dishwasher because it had not been working for a few weeks. Yeah, I will be. I just hope it's not dangerous. The repairman had said that it was just probably a kinked hose, so Reed was just going to pull it out just a little bit to unkink the hose so that it would work. Look at her. You see the hose? I didn't see anything. It's pretty dark. You he sent me to go and get a flashlight. Got the flashlight, honey. I asked him, where do you want me to shine this? And he didn't answer me. Read? Read? It was the scariest thing I saw in my life. Yes, emergency, may I help you? Yes. Are you seeing medicine? My husband must have shot himself. I'm at what? Freak. Alert. Okay, now. Just calm down. What did you say? He shot himself or something. I just came upstairs. He was working on the dishwasher. I came upstairs. I thought he was laying there. He is quiet. Um, he's not moving. <laughs> Possible electrical. Okay, he was working on the dishwasher. He is quiet. Yes, he's not moving. Please. What? He's is he conscious? I don't know. I just came running in. I'm in the bedroom. I don't Do you need have a kitchen. Do you have a phone near where no. he is? No, I don't. We need the Evanston ambulance to respond for a possible electrocution. Volunteer rescue units in the area were alerted, including close friends of the Larson family, EMTs Lisa and Rob Bourne. The thought crosses your mind that it can always happen to somebody you know, but I don't think I would have ever thought that it would have happened to Reed or Lori. I need to know if he's breathing. You listen to me, don't you leave me. I knew he was not breathing because he was so blue and there was no pulse. Okay. Oh, he's not breathing. Oh. Evanston Sheriff's Dispatcher Dina Miller was handling the call. Okay, they have been When she confirmed to me that he was not breathing and that he was not conscious, I knew we had a serious call. She came back to the phone and told me that she had removed his hand from the power source. I was immediately grateful that she had somehow also not been electrocuted and that we didn't have two people down. Do you know CPR? I don't know if I remember. Is there anybody there who does? I, I just said, my kids next door get bullets. Marianne, it's her bullet with next door. Okay, okay, that would be good if Marianne can assist. Okay, I'm going to go see him again. Okay, now wait a minute. What? To go to him, what I want you to do lay him back on his back if he is still not breathing, okay? I could hear the panic in her voice. I had to get her attention and tell her he needs air. We have got to start rescue breathing. Okay. We're going to give him some rescue breathing. I want you to tilt his head back with one hand, your right hand. With the other hand, I want you to place it under his neck and to gently lift up. Okay. 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 So you're going to open an airway and I want you to give him two good breaths. I was very scared realizing that I had to do CPR by myself, and I was just hoping that I could remember right. everything that I had been taught. All right, we're going to now, okay? Um. Next door, Mike Dean happened to be visiting a friend. And a little girl was at the door screaming that her dad had been shot. What happened? He's been shocked. He's unconscious. He's not okay. breathing. I he checked his up. pulse. Have to breathe for him. When I looked okay, at him, he breathing? was just hollow. No life. Just dead. Okay. Plug his nose. Okay. Breathe. I learned CPR while I was in college. 
The class One, teaches you two, nothing about three, the emotions four, that's three. going through you at the time. One, two, three, four, These kids were five, expecting me to give their father back One, to him and two, bring him three, back to life. Four, five, the pressure was just enormous. Check. I don't hear anything. It's not that happening. Just keep working. Just keep going. It was just scary to think that your life could flash before you that fast and your whole life can change in a matter of seconds. Rob and Lisa arrived within three minutes. One, two, three, four, five. I was shocked. Oh, okay. He's not breathing. It was an extreme load on my shoulders at that point because I could see in Lori's eyes that she was counting on Lisa and I to help her husband. And I didn't know whether he was going to make it. I didn't know whether I'd be able to do what I needed to do to help my friend. It's got a good pulse. Okay. As I was giving him breath, Lori was saying, please don't let him die, Lisa. Please don't let Reed die. And that was very hard on top of doing a job you had to do to listen to your friend plead for her husband's life. A Uinta County Fire Ambulance arrived within 10 minutes, including volunteer EMT John Sayed. Any time that you're involved with electrocution, the patient is most definitely in serious shape. No entrance or exit wounds at all? None noted. Come on, Reed, let's go. Come on. Stay Come with on, us Reed. now. The hope that we had was the fact that his heart had spontaneously started, but there's a very good chance that this man may not survive the injuries that he received. Seeing the ambulance leave, I could feel for the family knowing that they may not see their father again. 42-year-old Reed Larson was taken to IHC Evanston Regional Hospital, where he was examined by emergency physician Kevin O'Mara. When he first arrived, they were having to breathe for him. We tried a comma tube twice, had a gag reflex. He had a heart rate and a blood pressure, but his eyes were dilated and unresponsive. This man looked like in the limbo land between life and death. Okay. Seeing an area over here. All right. We also found an area of electrical burn on the top of his head. Okay. We became concerned at this point that the electrical injury to his brain has been severe enough that despite getting his heart back, his brain may not recover. Called the helicopter to get him down. I was scared to death, wondering if he has brain damage. Will I be able to handle that? Will my kids be able to handle it? Will he be able to handle that? Reed, honey, it's Lori. I just held his hand and I just told him, I says, don't you dare leave me. Don't you die on me, okay? Don't you die on me. I just told him, you've got three kids you've got to raise and don't you dare leave me. Reed was airlifted to the University of Utah Hospital's burn center, where he was in and out of consciousness for two days. The first time that he opened his eyes and he looked up at me and he recognized me, it was like your heart missed a beat. Nurse! And I knew he'd be okay. Eight months have passed since the incident. Huh? Did he got mad at you third round all night? Reed today is the same person that he was before. He laughs, he jokes, he teases. He is alive with no brain damage, no side effects whatsoever. Play T ball, huh? I think he's the luckiest man in the world. Have fun. Do you want to go up to grab a grab? Ah, Derek don't like the cabin, do you? He don't like that cabin. When I found out how close to death I actually came, there was a tremendous despair because who would take care of my wife and children? But nobody could love them like I love them. There was also a tremendous sense of gratitude when I found out how many people had come to our support and our aid. We came as close to death that you can come without dying. 
And every time I see him bend over and kiss Lacey or Derek, I always think, he almost wasn't here to do that. So electricity isn't forgiving. Even if it's just changing out a light fixture in your house, you need to make sure the power's off before you, you dig into it. I will be forever grateful and indebted to Mike. CPR saved my husband's life, and I think everybody should know CPR. I don't feel like a hero at all. I felt that I was there and that I had to do something. Any other human being would do the same thing that I would do. The city of Evanston honored Mike Dean for his heroism that day. I always love and appreciate him very deeply for what he has given me that precious gift of my family back and a second chance of life.